quarter action, Utah Stadium, here's Rob Sowley. We first hands on, Bombers exactly the start they want here, clearing it out of the middle. Ball held up, Reynolds goes again, butters up. Knight gets a nice little kick forward though to the advantage of his teammates. Ball in dispute, Clarence really uh, filling it up around there, calling, uh, appealing for holding the ball, but the umpire's having none of that. He's going to ball it up about 40 metres out directly in front of the Northern Bombers goal. Reynolds against Angerstein. Angerstein, big hit out. Drives it in though from the Bombers. Top of the goal square. Bounces beautifully. Sits. Sits for the for a spoon. But unfortunately his radar wasn't on. One behind. Quick play on there from Clarence. That's a railway worker's wing. Side of the ground. They're out here, they've got numbers. Umpire's blowing the whistle as if to say he's deaf downfield, but no. Long kick there from uh, Jackson, drives it into 50, and that man Garland presents himself beautifully. He wheels and goes, got a couple of options, and uh, it sits for Josh Green. You talked about it, didn't you, about the AFL listed uh, players, Garland to Green, not what the Northern Bombers would have been looking for, so almost a could be a 12 point turnaround. Bombers unlucky not to snag one at the other end. Green lining up, slight angle. He'll kick it from around about 35 metres out. A player of his calibre shouldn't miss this, which isn't the start that the Northern Bombers would want. Green moves in. Never ever in doubt, Josh Green. You can hear from our effects, Mike. A lot of Clarence fans here. Not sure if they came up on that chopper that we've mentioned a couple of times today, Dave, but uh, it's certainly uh, certainly the start Clarence had won, Max, in this last quarter. Yeah, it was, Rob, and uh, really you know, polished finish there by Josh Green to kick his third for the game. North had their chance. They got it deep into their forward 50, another entry without any success, whereas uh, Clarence have rebounded it. Uh, good mark by Garland, uncontested, nearly, uh, unfortunately, for his opponent. And uh, he just spotted up Josh Green a little bit closer and uh, not so tight an angle. Back in the middle again, taken there by Lee. Now we've got a free kick, a holding free kick. Uh, it's going to go the way of the Bombers. And uh, hear that chopper in effects, Mike. Looks like Wade Sulzberger with the ball. Boom. Boom. In fact, at number 26. Kicks towards half forward, Bennett. Front position, strong mark against Buchner. Been a good battle all day. Bennett with three goals. Plays on, gets around Bruchner, kicks to the pocket, finds a teammate there in Judah Edmonds. So Judah Edmonds, impressive last week. He's uh, filled in the ruck and the cages to give Lee a bit of a chop out. At the moment, he's required to kick a goal. He's a long way out, 48, kicks towards the goal square, into the goal square, Bennett! What a great mark, play on! Play on, says the umpire. Has to handball it out. The crowd don't like it. Now with Donnelly, snap for goal, offline, one behind. Well, boys, what do you think of that one? Well, I think we're a long way away, obviously. Uh, Maxie and I are shrugging our shoulders here, Dave. We're not sure about that one at all. <laughs> yeah, we are a long way away. Umpire was close anyway. It's in the book now. It's one behind. Now it's the margin to two straight kicks. Oh, bad kick there. Now falls to Van Dam. Now to Bennett. Cox good. You'll tackle from behind by Sayward. Has to release the ball. He's now uh, called for dropping it. Might have been it harsh. He didn't have it for very long. But Cade Saywood, now when he goes dangerously back towards the goal square, might turn out all right. Chain of kicks now ends up with Webberly. He goes here towards Penwright. So long kick. Well, it's smothered. Chance. Here for Judah Edmonds, gets his balance as Judah Edmonds snaps on goal. And he's kicked it. Great goal. Fantastic goal by the young man. A badly needed one for North Launceston. It narrows the gap back to a one straight goal. And I called Penwright as the player there who got the kick smothered, but not convinced it was. I have to wait till he turns around. A few of the players in long sleeves today. Yeah, commentator's nightmare, Dave, yep. uh, with these young guys with their similar haircuts. <laughs> So good poise there from Jude Edmonds, Maxi. Yeah, it was. And it was good perseverance. Like, he, he was in uh, two or three contests there and just kept, you know, persevering, you know, following up. And, uh, you know, little, good little balk there at the end. And uh, 
didn't look a very convincing kick, but it uh, got the right result. Back in the middle, Lee versus Angerstein. Angerstein this time, hands on it. Rugby scrum around the ball. The Bombers aren't going to let it out. Appealing for a holding the ball there. Brad Cox, good, you're asking the question. Umpire saying no thanks. And he's going to ball it back up where we started a moment ago. Lee versus Angerstein again. Again, split the honours. Secondary punch from Pierce. Quick kick there from Cox Goodger driving it forward. Should be a mark there to Clarence, and it is. Just a cross half back. They're going to switch the play out to this open side of the ground. Bombers have got the numbers there, though. Probably wasn't the best option. Towed towards the boundary line. Clarence trying to gain possession and uh, rushed over just through the interchange area just in front of the Northern Bombers dugout. South Launceston by 53 points over Deloraine. Uh, so I would not quite sure what stage of the game that is, but um, certainly a convincing uh, lead at the moment. And St Kilda and Port Adelaide at level 11 minutes into the last quarter. Go to power. Ruckman splitting it again. Not, not much between them. Angus Stein with a bigger body. Lee probably a bit more athletic. Going to get another throw in here just where we were before. Another repeat throw in. Bombers would be wanting the next one. Lee pushes to the front, gets his first hand on it. Cox Goodger watches it go over again from where it came, Dave. We're going to see a lot of stoppages in this last quarter. It's a free-flowing game, six goals apiece at half time. Clarence led by a point. But uh, now the margins. Straight two, uh, straight goal at the moment, 9-10 to 8-10. The Roos lead. That's going to go out of bounds for the third time. So the boundary umpire is struggling to get any depth at the moment with those boundary throw-ins. And I think the uh, field umpire might be saying, just come in a little closer, try and get a bit more depth. Angustine and Lee, the two big fellas. There's Ollie Angustine, one of the improved ruckmen in the league. Probably the tallest ruckman in the league as well. Lee wins this one, and he taps it out of bounds as well. <laughs> so uh, a bit of a shout for deliberate there from some Clarence supporters. Double. Almost like practice training on Thursday night, Absolutely. Dave, with your ruck set out, uh, setups, this one. That's three, three in a row. <laughs> slightly the attacking side of the wing. They might have gained five metres uh, in this passage of play of the Bombers. Time clock, seven and a half minutes. Boundary throw in. This one's a bit shallow again. Angus Stein this time taps it towards the centre of the ground. Off the ground by Cox Goodger. Only as far there is Saywood, who's been pretty good. Towards Tyler Penwright. Letting the ball go is Van Buren. He's got some room. He takes a bounce. So he loses control. Van Buren. Now he's in trouble. He's tackled. Ball wheels the Clarence crowd, but uh, yeah. umpire has mercy. And we'll ball it up on the wing. Just about kills an old football coach to see someone bounce on a wet day, Maxie. Oh, I don't think he's bounced it much before based on that. <laughs> <laughs> up it goes. Angus team wins the tap. This beautiful tap out the backs to Norton. Norton towards the forward 50. Oh, must have marked to Edmonds. Couldn't quite take it. Now Penwright, uh, sorry, Preshaw gets it to Garland. A little kick for goal here. This might go through. Oh. I think it does. Goal to Clarence. They're back out to two goals. So I'm just trying to see who kicked that goal. Is it the one on the left or the one on the right? Yeah, it's either Jacques Barlick or Tyler Penwright. I think it was Penwright. Yeah. Gonna give it to Penwright. Gonna give it to Penwright. Yeah. Anyway, it's a goal in the book. We'll give it to Tyler Penwright. It looks so alike there inside that attacking 50. Well, it doesn't help when they both wear long sleeves with a ponytail. <laughs> one's 35 and one's 36. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> real, real nightmare for the commentators today, as we've said. Angus Diner against Lee. Resume hostilities in the middle. Lee first hand on this time. Bombers will want the next one. Quick soccer kick off the ground. Tommy Bennett butters up beautifully there to Leary. Throws it on the boot. Just pushes it across the face, though. They needed that one. No, a goal. There you go. Need to get the glasses, guys. I need to get uh, get those eyes looked at. I thought that was just the other side of the post. But uh, no, Brandon Leary with a very, very quick response, Maxi. The goal umpire moved a long way, but uh, didn't do the old tap on the chest that's mine type thing. And uh, away you go. And another... Quick reply uh, in the name of the game. I was about to comment that uh, two-goal lead was significant, but they brought it back to one again, the Bombers. So 
Certain, certainly, uh, you know, terrific to see such a close game between two so evenly matched teams, Dave. Absolutely. 10-10-70, Clarence North Launceston, 9-10-64. Angus Dean with a tap out, but Lee Sharks it himself. Kicks half 40 towards Leary again. He's kicked a couple of beautiful goals today. He might have been held there by his opponent. Umpire says he was. Fellow number 41 in Sayward. Go long. So Leary, instructed to go long by Max Walker. He does so. Donnelly can't quite grab the mark. Gets it on the follow-up. Spills out of his hands. Kick off the ground. Chance here for Burgess. Is he tackled? Mm. He's pushing the back. It's probably unlucky there, the Bombers player. He did all the right things till he fell on him. Harry Burgess. Right on defensive 50 for Clarence. Gets the handball away to Webberley. Webberley up the wing, looking for Angerstein. Pretty sure falls off his hands. Maxi, what are you saying? Oh, well, that's where Edmonds has got to be better. He just got sucked into the ball, and Garland just sat there 30 metres off, yeah. back. Like, if Clarence had it, Garland had 150 metres to do what he wanted to. He's, he's got to be more disciplined than that. Down his throw and right in front of the interchange area. Centre wing. Game will go to right down to the wire. So stay with us here on City Park Radio. Chance for Whitney, lays on the ball. Touch lucky there, perhaps. Mm. Tackled there by Burgess. Ball up. Lee, tap out towards Foon. Down with Jackson and Whitney. Whitney might have gone into Jackson's back there. It's out of bounds now. It's tough, it's willing, it's contested. And you're enjoying all the best of tier selection on City Park Radio. And here's Rob Sauer. Yeah, look, anybody's game at the moment, 11 minutes, 40 seconds played in the last quarter. Umpire throwing it in on the wing position, just in front of the Bombers stand. Lee and Angerstein do battle again. Oh, tough physical encounter there. Driven forward by Pierce into the 50. Bennett nudged out of it. Beautiful bit of work there by Bushner. Great body work. Keeps it nice and low. Clarence switching play to the far side. Looks like Harper. He's looking up, not a lot in front of him. Gonna go sideways. Webberly out there. Could not be Holmes. Holmes, heads up the wing. Sun causing a bit of havoc there for the players on the, uh, on the wing this time of the day. Bombers are gonna come away with it and feed it inside 50. Not the best kick. Anybody's ball at the moment. Leary in there battling hard for it. Clarence by hand. Swing and a miss. Pierce drives it inside. Three Clarence players, one bomber player. Bennett. Oh, it's probably a free draw. Yes. Too high. Too high. Jackie Avent. One of the commentators' favourites, Dave. Yeah, he's a good player, Jackie. He's you know, one of those uh, multi premiership players. It's going to be his most important kick of the day, though. Absolutely will not have a more important kick today up until this point. I don't want to uh, get the crystal ball out as to what might happen, but uh, he really needs to kick this, and if he does, he's going to tie things up 13 minutes into the last quarter. Jackie A. Vent, very deliberate. Almost directly in front, probably only about 30 metres out. Set sail. Straight over the goal umpire's hat, into the net. And it's all square, 10 goals, 10.70 apiece as we approach the 14 minute mark, Max, in the last quarter. Yeah, just haven't been able to separate, you know, either of them all day, have they? And uh, they're still proving it uh, difficult to do. So this is going to go right down to the wire, which is a pretty obvious call, but um, neither side look like wiltering at the moment. You know, Clarence got that couple of goal break and then North got uh, one and then that reply through Avent again, so... Yeah, this is probably one of the better games that I've seen this year, Dave. Good experience too there from Avent to draw that free kick inside that attacking 50. Yeah, yep. Yeah, he knew what he was doing there. Back in the middle. Lee wins the tap. Cox Goodger. Don Lee. Bit of experience in the centre there now. Oh, well met there by Tom Bennett. Hamill was in front of him though. Oh, he meets the contest hard. Chance that a rebound for Clarence through Baxter Norton. Gets it back to uh, Harper. Harper's handball was in hope. Only goes as far as Cox Goodger. <laughs> kick smothered. Handball, Cox Goodger's a good one to Pierce. Pierce kicks around the corner to the pocket. Foon's there, Avent's there, bounces off his chest. 
20 metres around from the behind post. What do you got for us, Max? Uh, final score up at Rachel Lee. Rachel Lee, 13 11 89, have defeated Longford 13 4 82. So, okay. seven point victory there to the Town Tigers. Rachel Lee are coming in season 2021. Slow start. So, working their way up the ladder. Bailey wins the tap this time for Clarence. Only as far as Bennett tries to get the handball to Pierce. Tracks the ball to the boundary line. Game on here. Probably got about uh, 14, 15 minutes of time left. It's 15 minutes into the last quarter. Hasn't been much between the two teams all day. Steele's a big loss, I think, isn't he? He's, he yep. was a difference there. We talked all day about that height differential. Absolutely. Bailey up against Lee in the ruck contest. Bailey wins it. Lee sharks it. Swings around the corner, the big fella. Gets a point, and it puts him in front here at Utah Stadium by that one point. 10-11-71 to 10-10-70. Handy point. Webberley looks to launch the next Clarence attack. Got a couple of options. Kicks it up, and it looks like it's the player in Saywood. Saywood's having a look. Bombers have tightened it up in their defence here at the moment with their pressing. That's a really nice mark to Garland, though, presenting beautifully as he had all day. Goes in board, finds a Clarence player by himself in uh, Harper. Harper goes wider further again out there. Ball moved on quickly. His teammate working for him in Poprotny drives it in forward to Green. Well, Green probably should have marked that one. He's got rid of it, playing for a free kick. Off the table. Clarence player slips over. He's going to be taken out of bounds. In that forward pocket, Clarence attacking and looking dangerous. Apart from that little bit at the end there, the, their ball movement, I would say, has been better than North Launceston's today overall. Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, Webley's set up a lot of attacks from halfback. He has, yep. Boundary throw in. Clarence need a score here. Mm, Get back in front. Lee couldn't quite take it. Against the boundary line, Fletcher Bennett. Jackson's got it. Up against the boundary, Ethan Jackson for a miracle goal. Squares it all up with a behind. 10-11-71 apiece. It almost is one of those things, isn't it, with Webley? You'd almost be tempted to tag him. He's playing that oh. quarterback role back there beautifully. He's been fantastic today. Mark Walsh and his return to the side. Played mainly in defence today. Kicks close to the boundary line, but successfully. He finds Tom Bennett, who's drifted way up the ground. Goes low with the kick. Pinpoint to Jack Avent. Kick the last goal. Avent up the wing. Clears Declan Chug, runners wanted. Well, attempted kick off the ground there by Mitchell. He kicks around the corner, inside 50. That uh, mid-air kick was a pretty good one. And Baxter Norton's taken the mark at half-back. Yeah, look, Cristiano Ronaldo would have been mm. proud of that one. That was a really nice hit. Terence just slowing it down. Out on the, uh, the wing. Player bumped as he gets rid of it. Umpire said that's OK. Almost a mark there to Clarence. Bombers go to clear it away. Ball driven inside 50. On the lead, big Judah Edmonds. Kicked a great goal from out there before. He's saying, no, I'm not going to shoot. Sets it up for his teammates. Probably not the best kick. Off the front, Leary. Leary! Oh, just... He just pops up, doesn't he? He's so smart. And his awareness around goals, Maxie Walker. He's just so confident on both sides of his body. He didn't even think twice then that I'm on the wrong side. It just looks so natural. So, uh, again, in the right spot. I think the handball come from um, Rushton then, I think it was. But uh, just, again, front and centre, quick hands, and uh, just done it with ease across his body around the corner for, a, for his uh, fourth for the day. Yeah, he's certainly been the difference between the two sides, hasn't he? That small forward, very, very clever, as you called, Max, both sides of the body. Done a little bit of stuff in the middle of the ground, but uh, he's given the Bombers the advantage at the 19-minute mark of the last quarter. Yeah, great game, Brandon Leary. Uh, so that was three goals, guys? Four goals? Four. Four goals. Gee, it's a good game for the youngster once again. Back into attack here, North Launceston. Another goal might be enough in this game. Near the 20-minute mark. And it's a throw there against the young man in Judah Edmonds. Free kick to Buchner. In fact, in some ways, a draw might be a fitting result in this game. It's been so close today. But uh, I'm sure Brad Cox Goodger would love to be walking off the ground a winner today in this uh, big milestone game. 
caught by seven points with uh, a minute to go in the last. So the go. Should be enough there. And Fuchner takes his time, takes a couple of bounces. Kick to Jacques Barwick, half volley. Has to play on, corralled. It's, it's still in play. Fans trying to force it forward. Jacques Barwick in there again. It's right in the half forward flank here for North Launceston. Fans player tackled. Ball up. 11 11 77 the Bombers. Clarence 10 11 71. I think they may have kicked the last three, the Bombers. Yeah, they have. They've certainly yeah. come to play in the last quarter. So, chance now for Whitney. Can't quite pick it up. Contested ball. High tackle there on Holmes. Umpire sees it. And Holmes from half back. Get to his feet. 20 minutes and 30 seconds gone. Eight to ten minutes of game time left. He keeps looking inside here as Holmes, looking for a switch. Eventually goes the 45 kick to Webberley. Not a bad option if he can pick it up. It goes too far though. There's Mitchell. The young man gets tackled. He took on the tackle. How's the umpire going to read this? It's play on. Be a fair result in the end. So vocal crowd here, as you can hear. Always big rivals, North Austin and Clarence. Angus Stein wins the tap to space. Another chance for Mitchell, picks it up the young fella, fumbles. Jackson gets it back to Harper. Looks for an outlet, has to go with a left foot kick. High up and under towards half forward. Stingling a wrestle there. Flicks out the back, there's the ball. Taken by Webberley, he's in everything in this last half. Up towards Bailey, can't take the mark. Josh Green from the front of the pack. Josh Green for goal is offline. And just one behind, could be a handy one. Could be. 10, 12, 72. Clarence, North Austin, 11, 11, 77. Dean Buren having a little look. There's a run, drives it long. Bennett, fair way up the ground from where we normally find him. Bombers player kicks, keeps it in. Leary, clever footwork back to Bennett. Bennett on to Leary. Leary's about to get cleaned up. It's a great tackle. That's a great tackle. Rewarded there for his effort to James Bealey. Wanted to go on with it. Moves it quickly. Clarence again go back into the middle of the ground. Howlett out wide. Two on one here. Bombers will want, won't want this to be a mark. Unfortunately it is. Clarence move it on quickly. Long into the full. Clever punch. Sure, was that Steve. Steve Kivis, was it? That was, Stingle. That was a magnificent spoil. Yeah. Getting straight to the chest of Webley. Yep. It certainly was. He really got himself in the right spot there. Averted a certain mark and possibly a certain goal. This is the area of the ground, though, we know that Josh Green does some of his best work. So he's directing traffic. Ball comes in. Lee, nice clever uh, fist out to... Uh, picked up there by Ethan Jackson. I tackle on Jackson. He's about 45 metres out. That's Cox Goodger. And Cox Goodger's having a discussion with the umpire about it. He's suggesting that perhaps the free kick wasn't there. Given off. Fed in quickly. Bombers look to clear. Oh, oh dear, that hand pass wasn't... It didn't hit the intended target. Yeah, that that's probably out of the full. No, throw in. No. Oh. If it was, it was probably off Josh Green. Yeah. I thought it came off Green's foot. Uh, yeah. Bombers uh, hoping that that was the result, but they're going to get a... Clarence are going to get a boundary throw in in their forward pocket, deep into attack. Angus Stein and Lee. Lee again, first hand on it. Picked up by Garland. Holding the ball to the, uh, the, the query, but no. Bombers looking to move it out. Quick kick forward there by Nankovic. The fist there by Donnelly drives it over and out of bounds. Colin Garn was very lucky there. I think he might have held on too long. Maxi agrees with me. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, it's a boundary throw. They've gained some territory, the Bombers, importantly for them. It's now about 70 out from goal. Right half forward flank. Time clock, 24 minutes. Probably got four or five minutes to go. Angustine, nice tap. Gets it to Howlett. Back inside 50. And a lovely mark there. Fletcher Bennett. That was a tough mark up against Penright. He'll take his time. Long down the line will be the instruction here. That's what he does. Looking for a target. Off the hands to Sam Green. Gets it to a teammate there in Burgess. He's tackled. Now it's with Avent. Avent's handball is smothered it right on centre wing. Right in front of our boundary rider there, Tony Webb. 
Probably needed to kick it, didn't he, there, rather than hand pass it. They had numbers streaming forward, the Bombers. Centre wing. Bombers lead by five points. That's been nip and tuck all day here at Newtown Stadium. Angus Dean tries to get over the top. Backs to Norton, little toe poke. Ends up with Fletcher Bennett. Back to Cox Goodger. He's tackled by Holmes. Now, how does the umpire read this one? I think it's going to be a ball up. Two number ones there, James Holmes and Brad Cox Goodger. Both sides will be wanting uh, to get a clearance from this stoppage. Angus Dean tries to get it to Webberley. Holmes is in there. Another ball up. Webberley's put himself up around the ball now too. He knows the importance of this next two or three minutes. We're over 25 minutes. Time clock starting to become the enemy of the ruse. Angus Dean wins the tap. Now to Cox Goodjack gets free. Big kick. Vital kick towards half forward. Then it will fly from behind. Oh, nearly takes it. Chance though for Burgess. Gets it to Webberley. He'll throw it on the boot to get territory. To half forward. Two and one contest. Bailey was in there. Probably a good result in the end for Bailey as it's knocked out of bounds. Anybody's game still here at the moment. And as you said, Dave, there's still plenty of time. Plenty of time. Ball thrown in on the wing, just in front of our commentary position. Lee and Angerstein, again as they've done all day. Lee front position, first hand on it. Clarence looking to get, a, get the clearance. It goes past Angerstein with a little tiny toe poke. Bends down, picks it up. Back to Webberley. Drives it forward, Cox Goodger. In the right spot at the right time. Calling on all those years of experience, all those games experience. And he's going to go up the line. Goes long. Almost a mark there to uh, the uh, Bombers. Clarence clear it back out through the middle. Runners galore here as they look to spread. Harper being an option. Grabs it, has a look. Goes towards uh, Garland. Garland takes the mark. Quickly wheels in board. And finds that man in Jackson who's Ooh. been very, very busy today. Probably not much closer though. The game could be on the boot of Ethan Jackson here. I don't know, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Maxie, on the distance. I'm not sure uh, how far that travelled. Garland was very quick to play on. Might be worried about those ageing hamstrings, perhaps. <laughs> Call it's this one, Rob. Big kick here. I'm not feeling that confident for him, but uh, he's certainly going to give it every chance. Not real pretty off the boot. Doesn't make the trip. Balls for the Bombers who are looking to clear out. Cox Goodger back there at the moment, getting busy. Ball comes back out towards the commentary side, and that's a really, really Jeez. nice mark there to, uh, is that Avent? No, Jay Foon. What about the Jay kick Foon. from Stingle? Yeah. Under pressure. Stingle again. Foon. Foon plays on around him. Drives it up towards the wing. Clarence have got the numbers there. Perhaps held without the ball. That's what the umpire said. David Oh, Webley was looking to claim the advantage. The umpire said no. It's got to come back. Free kick there to Howlett. Got to go quickly. Just ticked over to 28 minutes. Howlett finds uh, Jackson. Jackson plays on quickly. Pumps it inside 50. The game's on this contest, I reckon. Here it comes down. Garland steps a goal. He might have won the game here. He might have won the game for Clarence. Colin Garland. Step around the corner, 20 out, impossible angle. And he might have put the ruse into an inescapable lead. Leading into the last minute of the game. Maxi, talk us through that one. Um, I'm a bit gobsmacked. That was just unbelievable. It was 18 guys around the ball. He managed to be able to pick it up, kick it over his right shoulder, straight through the middle. And, uh, oh, that was, that was just uh, an amazing goal. Well done. 28 well done, and three quarter minutes. It's one point the margin. Clarence 11, 12, 78. 11, 11, 77. The Northern Bombers, what do you can see, Rob? They've just pushed Garland up onto the wing. Obviously, as soon as yep. this ball goes up, he'll just run back and sit inside that 50. And the thing we've got to remember, too, that was a small forward goal. This guy's, what, six foot four yeah. in the old money? He's all his experience in there, like excitement. How many goals is that today for Colin Garland, boys? Three. Three. So we've got a whistle on play now. We might have had a six, six, six infringement, have we? And be a Clarence ball to Angerstein. Angerstein, I reckon the big fella might be looking to hand this off. The Northern Bombers are awake to that. They're trying to cover all the options. He's going to go back and take his kick. He'll probably try and take it as deep as he can. 29 and a half minutes. High kick to half forward. Jackson will fly. Oh, good mark. 
Great mark there. Ollie Preshaw has shown a bit of class today at times. Kicks inside 50. The player there may not play on, I reckon. He'll eat up the clock. That's Karen Howlett. So I'll try and get an interview with uh, Jeremy Webberley after the game if Clarence win or Brad Cox could you if the Bombers get up. So put your notice there, Tony. Karen Howlett had kicked a goal earlier in the game, Rob. Yes, he yep. did. So he's lining up for his second. And then he decides to go sideways to Webberley. So it's all about possession. He goes back to Howlett, eating up seconds. Over 30 minutes now here at Utah Stadium. Howlett says he's going to go long. He does this time. To the goal square. Can they take another grab here, Clarence? Up they go. Falls to the contest, pretty short. Shovels it out towards Jackson. Kicks it towards the goal square. One behind. So this... Got to go coast to coast here, boys. gives the Bombers maybe one last chance. They're two oh. points up, Clarence. They're long kick. with a helicopter. Up on Sam, the wing. Sam Green is leading the chase for the ball. Back to Garland. Garland gets the handball away. Short kick will come into to Paprotny. Oscar Paprotny takes the mark. Hope you're enjoying this great contest here on City Park Radio 103.7. It's all over. Clarence has come up the highway, taken on the Northern Bombers and beat them here at Utah Stadium in a great contest by two points. Well played, everybody involved. Congratulations, Brad Cox. Good you, of course, on your 200th. But uh, the Clarence boys, led by their coach, Jeremy Webberley, have, uh, as I said, come up that... Uh, Highway made the difficult trip to Utah Stadium and uh, beaten the Bombers for the second time this year. 11-13-79 to 11-11-77. Well, it looked like the Bombers had just done enough to take control of this game, Max, but credit to Clarence. Uh, they were the better team when it mattered. Yeah, certainly um, probably 10, 15 minutes into that, that quarter, you thought North started to get on top, but uh, 